everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to customize your Arc DPS because people often ask me. They look at my streams or at my videos or whatever, and they go like, "Aranki, how do I make my Arc look like yours?" Because as you can see, I have a nice font. I have self stat. I also have like these nice separators, my, my arc grows upwards with uh, the amount of people in the squad. You can see that I also have a CC window in the top right, as well as damage taken window next to it. And you can see that like they are not as wide as arc usually is by default. And today I want to talk about how to do exactly all of those things and more. Because Arc DPS has so many customization options that you probably uh, never heard about many of them, or at least one of them. I hope to surprise everyone today. Okay, so first of all, we open area stats. This is the default area stats. And the very first thing that absolutely everyone should do regardless of whether you want to play around with Arc or not, is change this. Because as you can see, by default, Arc shows you the total number of damage you do and then your cleave per second. But in most raids, we don't care about cleave nor total damage. We mostly care about boss damage, right? We want to see our DPS per second on the boss and not cleave. Because if you think about it, if you look at the boss like Zira, for example, you're gonna have like tons of cleave damage on the people who have cleave. So like, I don't know, you have a Scourge with Epi, they are gonna have insane damage. But that doesn't mean that they are actually top DPS on boss. And you can artificially increase your cleave by attacking things that normally you wouldn't even kill, right? So we mostly care about boss damage. And the way we do that is we go, we right click this window, the damage window, we go to display, and then at the bottom here, wait, you actually can't see because my head is in the way. Let me move that here. We have the stats format at the bottom here. So if you hover over it, you can see what exactly each number represents. And then every other thing you put there, like brackets or commas or anything else, is gonna be just displayed as is. So what you want to do here is you want target per second. So target per second is the most important number. If you just do at five, you have your boss damage per second. And this is like the most important thing. But for me, I want cleave as well. If we look at cleave, cleave per second is at two. So we can do it like this. We can put any sort of other separator. So like instead of this little line I have, you can also just do at two in brackets and then you will have cleave in brackets. It's all just a matter of preference. I also find it useful to include target percents. So I do at six because that's target percent and put another line. And by using target percent, you can see if someone died, how much they actually contributed before they died. So this is the most basic thing that everyone should do. Another thing that's very important, that's literally in the same thing here. So right click display. And at the bottom, we have title bar format. For title, we want to specify the squad damage. Why squad damage? We want squad damage because on Broken King, for example, people always say that like you want 70 to 90K of squad damage. So you want to know what your squad damage is. Target per second damage of the squad which if we look at this pop-up, it is at three. And that will tell us how much DPS your squad is doing to the boss. But you can see that the window now says damage and then without any spa space, 
it shows you the number. So instead of that, we want to turn off the window name. And that is in style, show default title. And we want to turn this off. And we can put any sort of thing in front of this free. And I actually like having the boss name there. And that is an option that we have here. At five is the target name. So if I put at five, it will display standard kitty golem. And then we can put like a colon and a space because anything that isn't at number will display as is. And regardless of how much you want to play with your arc, these are the two important things. So first I want to mention the things that uh, many people probably don't know about. And that is the extras window. Here, there is an option to suppress achievements, suppress quests, and suppress events. So what do these three options do? They take effect on map reload, as you can see on uh, the little thing that pops up at my cursor. So taking them right now will not do anything. I will need to leave the golem area and rejoin it. Objective achievements essentially disables this panel here that you can see above my head. If you have any achievements that you're tracking, uh, this shows. You can see like all the achievements that I am tracking right now. And if you don't have any tracked achievements, it shows you the dailies. And I personally hate this window and I don't like it being here. So I like suppressing it to hide it. And then sub suppress objective quests makes this disappear, the little story uh, window. As for suppress objective events, uh, this doesn't actually remove events per se. What this does is that sometimes you get like these little windows that show that like, oh, there's a world v world bonus experience week or something going on. And taking this suppress objective events button will make that little window disappear. And like I said, it requires a map reload so we can leave into the aerodrome and you will see that these windows will completely disappear. And they are gone, as you can see. So we have this little window. And now what can we do to this window to make it look even better? Well, first of all, currently it's like wherever. So what if I want to have it above my chat? And what if I want to have my RxDBS grow upwards? So it will start moving like this with every person joining the squad. So if you want your RxDPS to grow upwards, there is one thing that you need to do. So first of all, we set the position to screen relative because we want to set it somewhere on our screen in a fixed position. So we do screen relative position and you will see that right now it jumped over there because it's at position zero, zero. So now we can move it down like 300, 400, 500, and just 800. Yes, 800 looks correct, but now it will still grow downwards. So if we want to grow it upwards, we need to take bottom left. And now we need to change this number to 205. I think five looks roughly correct. So now, because it's bottom left, it's anchored that the bottom left corner of this window will always be at position zero on the X axis. So like you can see that if I change this to like 50, I would move it right. And the position Y is the position vertically. So now we have arc anchored to my chat. I'm going to move X back to zero so that it's on the left. Actually, I'm going to make a small margin of like two pixels. Actually, no, that doesn't look good. Let's uh, keep it at zero. So we have arc 
in this position. And now, what next? Well, I like having self stats. So, the next thing to do is we're gonna open options again with once again Alt Shift T. And we're gonna go and enable self stats. These are all the windows you can enable. So, we're gonna be enabling self stats. And this shows you damage and healing. And I also like having barrier there. Okay, so we have self stats. Now, why self stats when you can see the exact same thing here in the area stats? Because this window is called area stats. Well, if there is ever some sort of issue with Arc, for example, after a patch, and Arc isn't working correctly and calculating your damage correctly. Self stats always grab the data from your combat log in your chat. You know, the one that you can enable. Let me move my Twitch chat window. Right here. Like, it shows me that I hit standard kitty golem for this match using this skill. These numbers are all taken into the cell stats window, which means that this window is always accurate. No matter what happens, this is always accurate. And this is also why this window can show you healing because server is not notified of any healing, which is why on area stats, you cannot have healing of others. You cannot have like a window of healing that other people do. You can only have a window of what you do healing wise. So we have self stats. Now we don't need the title bar here. So we can just go to style and antique title bar. And that way the window is much smaller. Now, what if I want this self stats window to be here above my area stats and to once again move upwards when my area stats grows. Well, we need to anchor this window on the other window. So what we want to do is we want to right click it, go to position and window relative position because we need to anchor it to another window. This other window is the area stats. And now area stats is called CHCLI as we can see right now, when we like enter this window relative position, every window will change its title to what it should be here from window name. So you can see that now my cell stats anchored to the right side of my area stats, but we want to anchor it to bottom left from this window top left, right? Because we're essentially like gluing self stats bottom left corner to area stats top left corner, right? Which is why we take top left here and bottom left here. I know that it sounds a little bit complicated, co complicated, but it really isn't. And this way now our self stats will be moving together with area stats and growing upwards. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Now, another useful window is metrics. So metrics is this tiny, tiny, tiny little window that shows three things. It shows F, P and R. And now what do these things mean? First, we have F, and as you probably guessed, that means frames. You can see that they have a constant, roughly 120 uh, FPS in here, which is very good. Uh, and you will see that once I start moving around and like looking at different things, it might drop to like 90 or something. And then you have ping. P stands for ping. And then the last number, R, is a little bit 
confusing to people sometimes. What other represents is the server refresh rate. And this number should always be at 25. Think of this as sort of the speed at which the game receives information from the server. So if it's less than 25, it means that you're disconnecting. So if it drops to like 10 or five or two, that means your connection is dropping and you're dropping packets. Like those, those little information packages that are flying over the cable or over the air, depending on whether you're on cable or on Wi-Fi, are just getting lost and you're not receiving them. I don't know, a better the carrying this information ran into another better and they had a better the crash and uh, <laughs> and they just uh, all got lost and don't know where to fly to uh, reach your PC anymore. And that is this other number. So what you will see will happen once you stop disconnecting and your other will stop being at free. For a moment, it will be 300 or 400 or even more than that. And that's the moment when all those birds that uh, crashed and got lost suddenly arrive all at once at your PC. So all the packets you've lost, they will all arrive at once. That's the moment in your game when you like disconnect and everyone is walking off the platform. And then suddenly all the skills, they happen all at once. That's, uh, that's exactly your server rate going from like three to 300. What we can do with this window is that if you don't like it being um, one under another, you can actually edit it and you can see that there's this N here, slash N. That's a line break. It makes a new line. So if you delete it and replace it with a space, it will all be in one line. And that way it takes less space. You can make it two spaces to make it look better. And what if I want it here and I want it stuck to these things? Well, then we can do window relative position we can once again input the area stats and then have our bottom left of this window uh, anchored to the top left of this window and then offset it by how big the self stats window is. This looks about right. So we've set up nice area stats with boss damage and cleave damage. We've set up self stats, we've set up metrics, and we made it so that our arc grows upwards above our chat and the self stats and metrics move together with them. So that's already pretty good progress. So as you saw earlier, I also have CC window and damage taken window, but hold on, I need something to drink. So how do I make a CC window and a damage taken window. Well, we go to options first. I want another area stats. That's where we want to start from. You have this extra area stats button and we tick the first one. Okay, but that's just another area stats. It shows exactly the same as this window here. And now if we want damage taken, it's super simple. All we need to do is tick in and now you will see that we are taking damage and it currently shows the total damage taken and the per second damage taken as well as percentage and you can keep it this way but if you want it uh, to show something else you can always go once again to display and do the exact same thing as we did with area stats. We can, for example, not have the cleave total. We can have just per second. Or maybe you don't want per second. Maybe you just want total. So then you do this. Or maybe you don't want the percentage. So you just do this. And this is like the number of how much damage someone took. Or you can have how, many, how much damage per second they are taken. And how much 
damage they are taken in percentage of the squad. This is all up to you. And then how do we do CC? Well, CC window is a little bit more complicated. We need to enable another area stats and we want to go to advanced stats. And in these advanced stats, we go to break bar. And it is very important that you take break bar here and not here, because those are two completely different things. We want squad stats, yeah? Not player stats. So we go to disk break bar. We tick this and that's it. It will always show per second. So you will not see the total number of CC that someone did. It is currently not possible to show the total amount of CC done. You can only see CC per second. However, if we bug the developer of Arc enough, maybe he will add the option to show CC in a number, just like the logs show if you go to dps.report. We've covered how to make additional windows, but now you can see that these windows are really big and it's kind of getting really cluttered on screen. So how do we change window size? We right click them as per usual. We go to style. We have window width here and we just change this to whatever we want. We can make it like 200 or even smaller. I think my windows are even smaller than that. Okay, for area stats, that's a little small, maybe 350. And maybe we want here even less than that, make it like 150. But now we have this problem that we can't see the numbers because the names are too long. And we also have the numbers at the beginning. So first we want to turn off the numbers. So this option is found in display and we untick index numbers there that's already much better right takes less space but we still have the issue that we cannot see the numbers because the names are too long well that's easy if we go to display there is an option for max name length and if it's at zero it's unlimited so it will show the entire name regardless of how long it is but i can set it to five and if I set it to five, you will see that the numbers will become visible and readable and same here, although you can't really uh, see much here. Now we go to display and we also change title bar format so that we, ha we can name it CC because it currently shows advanced break bar and I want this to be named CC. But now it just added it at the end. So we need to once again, not show default title. And now the window is called CC. Now, what if I want for these two windows to always move together? Well, then once again, I go to position, window relative position. I input the name CHCLI0 because that's what this window is called. And then maybe I want CC on the left of damage taken. So we are anchoring the top right of the CC to the top left of the damage taken. And then whenever I move them, they will move together because now they are stuck together. And if I want to put them here, then I can just do screen relative, relative position and anchor the top right to 200, 300, 350, 330, almost 320, 325, good enough. Okay, and now it's here. We talked about the window size and making less letters displayed. We talked about how to put windows at a certain position on the screen, how to change them so that they are anchored to other windows. So now let's go over the plugins available for Arc. These are things that you download separately from Arc and update separately from Arc. And I personally use quite a few plugins. 
Well, first of all, I use the KillProfMe plugin. So what this plugin does, it grabs account names of the people you are in a squad or party with and searches them on the KillProof.me website where you can make an account and show how much KP you have. So you will see that Subi, for example, on his account made it so that you cannot see his KP for specific bosses and you can only see how much LI slash LD he has. And this number is displayed here, it's 3,380. But for me, I make all my KP public so you can see all of it. And this isn't the only information you can see because if you go to column setup, you can also see like KP of every single boss. You just need to tick it and then it will appear. But I, for example, don't care about how much summer KP someone has. So I only have LI plus LD, the fractal KP, Doom, Kadim, Kadim the Peerless, and the Strike CMs. So you can set up this however you want. You can also make it so that you show columns based on map. So if you're in the aerodrome, it will show you raid KP. If you're in Arbor Stone, it, sh it will show you strike KP. If you're in um, the fractal lobby, it will show you fractal KP. You can also do this once again, either manual position, screen relative or window relative. And there is also more options that you can go through as you need. You can turn off the background to make it more transparent if that's something you want. You can also size to content or size content to window or you can do manual window size. You can also add padding and make it this. You can also show the header with text rather than with images if you don't recognize which KP is which, etc., etc. So there is quite a lot of options for this plugin and it's very useful to see how much KP someone has, especially because nowadays everyone just gives you those codes for Killproof Me and no one actually checks the website because it's too much effort. But with this, you can just check this little window and it will show you everything without you having to open your browser. The next useful add-on I have is Clear. So this is an add-on where you can add your main account or your old accounts and many, many more. And you can see how, like which bosses you have cleared and which bosses you haven't cleared. Currently everything is in red because it's Monday and raid reset happened and I haven't cleared anything yet but they become green as you clear more things. And you can also do this friend thingy where you can share your cleaners with your friends. So for example, if you have like a group of friends that you like doing random raids with on the weekend, you can see who is still missing which bosses so that it's easier for you to decide what you wanna just randomly do. Uh, then there's also the Mechanics plugin. Alt Shift L by default opens the Mechanics log. And the Mechanics log will tell you after you've wiped or after you killed the boss, all the things that happened. Let's say on Doom, someone explodes a bomb, you wipe, and then you wanna know who it was that exploded the bomb in the group. You can open the mechanics log and there will be like a name has affliction with like a time and it will tell you who it was that killed the group. However, keep in mind that this mechanics log is not always fully accurate. So don't take it at face value. Always double check before you flame people and this should not be used to flame people anyway. Next thing that is super useful is healing stats. There is the healing stats extension. You can see it in extensions 
like you will see like uh, you know options for the clearest window here you will see other stuff here that like are all the extent oh this is how you open the mechanics log okay it's here see it's here so you will find healing stats here if you have the dll and what this does it shows you how much you are healing and i am not on the healer right now but if i were to relog through it and start healing you would see that it would show me which skill is doing how much healing uh how much healing is being done by regeneration, how much by my stuff five, how much by my stuff one, how much by my nature spirit aura, etc. etc. It would all show up here and how much I'm healing my, my subgroup and my squad. However, one limitation that this plugin has is that it doesn't show overheal. So if someone is 100% HP, and you use a healing skill, it will not include that healing. That means that it's not always as useful as it could be if it included overheal. Another thing that this plugin can do is that if you log healing to FETC logs, it will include all your healing statistics in the boss log you generate after a boss fight, as well as this enable live stats sharing option, which will send the data of how much you're healing to everyone in your squad, as long as they also have the healing stats plugin installed. So if I'm running the healing stats add-on and no one else is running it, then I can only see the healing that I do. If there is another healer in the group, I will not see how much healing they are doing. But if everyone in my squad was running the healing stats add-on and everyone had enabled live stats sharing, then we would save a complete log with how much healing every single person in the squad did. Which is why I highly encourage everyone to install this plugin and share their healing so that we can have more complete logs so that we have not just the damage done by everyone in your squad but also the healing done and then the most important plugin is obviously the boon table which is highly customizable by like playing with all these options you can show all the unique buffs which aren't in the game anymore <laughs> A lot of them but you can also see like stealth uptime super speed uptime or even scholar uptime so that's very useful like let's say i'm playing a power class and i'm running, running scholar runes i want to be able to see how much time i actually was above 90 percent hp and getting the scholar bonus so the boon table is very useful and it is much much better than the default arc table. However, keep in mind that currently there is a lot of bugs with the boon table and it is being reworked. And I heard that the rework is coming soon. TM. Go back, Nox, if you want him to work faster. Now, one other option that I wanted to mention is sort of a niche thing. These two little tick boxes that you can see. Moving windows require mo it requires modifiers and clicking requires modifiers. So modifiers are by default Alt and Shift. You know that you have to press Alt Shift T to open and close the options window. Now imagine you're in Kadim the Peerless. You're doing a pylon and now you're super focused on what's happening on the boss. And my ball is dropping. And I like panic blink there where my arc is. And my blink actually doesn't go off because I clicked on arc and opened this instead of actually blinking. Now there is a way to avoid this and to prevent these sorts of, sort of wipes of I dropped a ball because I clicked on arc. And this is requiring modifiers. So 
What happens is that if I don't have this tick and I want to use a blink over here, I click and look, it opens this window instead of actually blinking. And it's terrible. If I make it so that it requires modifiers to click and move windows, I can actually be even hovering over a person on Arc and it will still blink rather than open this. Because now, whatever I do with Arc, whether I want to move a window or click on the window, it does nothing. I need to be holding Alt and Shift to be able to move windows and click on things. Is this highly specific example coming from experience? Yes. Now, the thing that has a warning. If we go to options, and we open the appearance tab, there is the secret option, use advanced style options. This is the thing that can really break everything. So you use it at your own responsibility. But there is a lot of really nice things in here. You can change window padding. So currently it's five, but if you change it to two, you will see that uh, the window padding will get less. That is like the black areas around them. Like if I change it to uh, 20, you will see what padding is. Because now you have like tons of empty space around your windows, right? So you can make it bigger or smaller uh, by changing this number. You can do window rounding. So if I put it to like 10, you will see that suddenly my windows are like super rounded. So you can round your windows a little bit. Yeah, you can play around with these settings as long as you make a backup of your current settings. Then you also can have like item spacing or cell padding, etc., etc. There's like so many options here and I don't even know what half of them do. Uh, but you can play around with them and see what is the appearance of ARC you like. But another thing worth mentioning is that there is a colors tab. And this is actually not all the colors because if you go to uh, profession, this is where you can find the colors for every class in the game. Yes, if you look at this little banner, that says the damage of Subi, uh, you see that this banner is green because it, he, he's a soul beast, right? And you can see that here we have this green of a soul beast. So yes, yes, Linka, I know. The names, they don't make sense, but this is Guardian, Berserker, uh, Engineer, I think. Then we have Ranger, and I actually don't know which which one is which class. I think seven is Mesmer, eight should be Necro, and then, yeah, like, you will figure it out once you, like, start tinkering with it. Uh, so you can change the colors here. And the T color is the color of Cleave, while B color is the color of boss damage. And by clicking on these colors, it shows you like this nice little window and you can like change the color and you will see that as I move this thing around, the butter here uh, on area stats changes. So I can make this butter whatever color I want. So, so yeah, uh, you can click these colors, you can change them. Remember that it's always boss overlaid on cleave, meaning that if you make the cleave really dark, the boss damage will also end up quite dark, even if you make it super bright. So you want probably cleave to be just a tiny little bit darker than boss. And I don't know, you just have to play around with it and see how it goes. Uh, one thing that is very noteworthy here uh, is that it's not just a matter of choosing the color, but you can also change the transparency by clicking this window here and dragging it. Oh yeah, logging and changing the directory. That's a good point, Sobi. So 
to be able to actually save boss logs, you have to go to boss logging and click this save after boss encounter. So when this is ticked, your logs will actually save. The logging folder, you want to use NPC name that will let your logs go into folders depending on which boss uh, you're saving. You can also use player name or guild name and you can also choose the folder where you want to save them. If you press the open button, it will just open your file explorer, explorer which you cannot see on my stream right now. But if you try it for yourself, you will see that you can just choose the folder you want to save your logs to. So if you go to any story instance or open world and you come across a boss that you want to save logs of, you just need to press Alt-Shift-S, remember the ID that you have here, open your options, go to logging and click add and then input the ID of whatever you want to log, press apply, done. It should work. Do you make a backup of settings? If you go to your Guild Wars 2 folder, you have a folder called add-ons. In the folder called add-ons, you have a folder called rgdps. In that folder, you will have two files that will have dot I and I at the end. You should have an rgdps.ini, which contains your rgdps settings. And there should also be rgdps.imgui.ini, uh, which contains the image UI settings. And those two files are probably the most important to backup. I see that there's also RGDPS table and RGDPS table language uh, INI, but I think those are settings for the Boon table. So if you don't have the Boon table plugin installed, then you probably will not have those files. There is also an option. As you can see here, we have boss logging and map logging. If you save after leaving map, it will save the entire map. So for example, it will save an entire raid wing. However, these logs are very big and currently unsupported by any thing that can process logs. So if you upload a map log to dps.report, uh, it will not process it correctly and it will not show you what, it da what the damage was and what happened in this log. So map logging is very much unsupported right now and you should not be saving map logs currently. It might change in the future, but currently they are not supported. Furthermore, there is a few things about ARC people commonly run into. For example, if you're running NVIDIA overlay, you have to disable photo mode in the overlay itself to be able to run it together with ARC. Otherwise, it will crash or it will not work properly. There is also a lot of issues with Bitdefender. I think that's the one people have been struggling with the most. You have to add Guild Wars as an exception to Bitdefender to make ARC work properly. And a few other things, you can check the Elite Insights Discord if you ever happen to have any issues with ARC not working. Thank and people there are very helpful and will always guide you through why your ARC is not working. I feel like people are gonna hate me for advertising this. <laughs> and now a few words about fonts. So I use this font that you can see on screen right now. And I really like this font because it's a small caps um, font. So what is a small caps font? It means that all the letters are written as if they were written with caps lock, except that the letters that are actually uh, capital letters are slightly bigger. So you can see that like in Areki, the letter A is actually a little bit bigger than the rest. So yeah, this is what a small, small caps font is. 
one thing to keep in mind when choosing fonts is that you probably want either a monospace font, so one which um, has like every letter and every number of the same width, so that you have like the, these numbers uh, one under another and not like a little bit off. Or this is actually not a monospace font, this is a tabular numbers font. So just the numbers are monospace. Just the numbers have each the same width. So these are the things you can search for uh, when looking for fonts yourself if you don't want to use mine. Uh, if you want to use the same font I do, it's linked under my stream and in my Discord.